my friend. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Corinth's Temple of Aphrodite. It really is a lovely sight, isn't it? The temple, that is, uh, not the ladies. Although they are also lovely. Lovely and lively and... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, what were we talking about? In Greece, many love stories were told about the gods. How romantic. Sometimes they were heartwarming and happy, but they often ended in tears, tragedy, and a whole brood of illegitimate children. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Zeus! Anyway, this tour will introduce you to some of these divine love stories, which may give you perspective on how the Greeks approached love in their own lives. Enjoy your visit, my friend. I'll come see you again when you finish the tour. Much like Athens, Corinth had its own Acropolis, called the Acrocorinth. The natural promontory provided an excellent view of the surrounding territory. It was also the home of several sanctuaries, allegedly constructed in the 6th century BCE. The Acrocorinth's most famous attraction was the Temple of Aphrodite. Pisanius describes it as having statues of Aphrodite, her son Eros, and the sun god Helios. According to Strabo, the temple's most distinguishing feature was its servants, who acted as sacred prostitutes. However, Strabo is the only source for this information, and it is still hotly debated to this day. Love played a large role in countless mythological stories. Zeus himself was not immune to the feeling and fell for both mortals and other deities. Some myths centered on forbidden feelings that led to tragedy, such as Phaedra's love for her stepson Hippolytus. While marriage was prominent in mythology, it was usually presented as problematic. For example, Aphrodite frequently cheated on her husband Hephaestus and Medea's resentment against her ex-husband Jason eventually drove her mad enough to murder her children. These less-than-ideal depictions reflected the Greeks' idea of marriage, which they viewed as a civic duty instead of a romantic union. The goddess Aphrodite was one of the mightiest Olympians and was typically associated with love, beauty and sex. She was worshipped all across the ancient Mediterranean by men and women, both young and old. Her origins differ depending on the version of the story. The poet Hesiod says that she was born from the severed genitals of Uranus, while Homer's version of the myth names her as the daughter of Zeus and Dione. Aphrodite appeared regularly in mythological stories and had many mortal lovers. Her favorite was Adonis, a beautiful boy who died tragically in a hunting accident. Aphrodite was devastated by his death, so she created a cult called the Adonia, to commemorate him. My friend, good to see you again. I bet you were surprised by some of the stories you heard. For a bunch of immortal beings, the gods certainly were saucy, eh? Tell me if there's anything else I can do for you. Is that so, my friend? Then let's get started. Which poet said that Aphrodite was the daughter of Zeus and Dione? Isiodos's version of this story said Aphrodite was the product of Uranus's uh, chopped olives, so to speak. So, no. Yes, it was Homer who said Aphrodite was a child of Zeus. On to the next question. Medea was married to which legendary hero? 
Yes, Medea was married to Iason, but after he left her for someone else, she resented him so much, she murdered their children. But let's not talk about such depressing things. Instead, you can answer this last question. What was the name of Corinth's Acropolis? Correct! The Acro Corinth has been home to many sanctuaries, as well as the famous Temple of Aphrodite. You passed the test! Congratulations, my intelligent friend! Normally, I don't let people go until they buy a souvenir, but for you, my friend, I'll make an exception! <laughs>